ProWrestlingSheet.com Welcome, everybody. It is Wednesday morning, so it's time for a SmackDown Live recap on Collider Body Slam from Tuesday SmackDown Live. And when I say SmackDown, I mean punch in the face. We are going to talk about so much that happened on the show. Go through it all. Tell you what we like, what we didn't like. <coughs> Rusev and uh, and go into all these things but as always I am your host John Roca joined by the CEO of the Pro Wrestling Sheet my man Ryan Satin how are you brother I am doing great I'm just trying to get this little piece of fig out of my mouth that I was yeah. eating right before these bars are good we got here in the office yeah. it's my first time eating one of those I like it's healthy too I'm going to start eating those more I think fig bars are can, if you're into fig figs or fig bars or fig newtons you can put away like stacks of them the next thing you know you're like how did I put on 40 pounds oh yeah because I ate all these fig newtons I think yeah it's very similar to a Fig Newton, which I do love. I yeah. love Fig Newton, so I yeah. guess I didn't even realize we had these here in the office. I'm very happy. <laughs> uh, um, you know, I really enjoyed SmackDown this week, but I think it's the first time in a while that Raw might have been better than SmackDown. Yes, I'm right? going to have to agree with that. Yeah, for a couple because of a couple of missteps here. In Raw, you can forgive. It's a three-hour show. You can forgive the occasional filler match, like the, uh, uh, you know, like the revival, that match, and all that, and what happened with, with, uh, the, with Zach uh, Ryder and his boy Hawkins. But with SmackDown, we've come to expect a certain level, yep. and I think when it doesn't live up to that level, then you have to give the Raw a little bit more credit, and Raw did a better job this week than SmackDown, I agree with you completely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think you nailed it perfectly right there. Mm. Uh, that Yeah, you're so, you're so used to um, such, a, such a better show on SmackDown yeah. that like when it's when it doesn't quite live up to that level, you notice it. Yeah. Uh, but I, I I still really enjoyed the show. I'm not like talking yeah. crap on the show. I think it was still a good show. It started out gangbusters. Becky coming in, doing her promo, talking about how she chose Ronda, doing the man thing. Crowd going crazy for oh, and then Charlotte comes out. Well, here's what I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I like this Charlotte promo. I thought it was quick, to the point, concise. She played with the fans in the way Ronda couldn't, and that's because Charlotte's a little more seasoned now. People shouldn't forget that when Charlotte got thrown off by the fans when she first started doing promos, when she got called up, she had some troubles at times with the fans. So it doesn't mean Ronda had, doing those stumbles uh, on Monday night means that she can't do it down the road. So I thought Charlotte played off of it well, but and then kind of ang- turned the angle, the narrative a little bit, saying how Becky got to this point because of Charlotte. Charlotte showed her the way. Charlotte was the queen. You had to follow the queen to get I gave you all the information you needed to get to where you are. Love that change. And Becky punching her. Lord almighty, that was an interesting response. Yeah, I I completely agree. You know, I think that... uh Charlotte is best when Charlotte's a heel. Yes. And it's interesting because, you know, when she was a heel before, I could be wrong, but I don't think she was, like, hardcore about it like she was last night. Like, last night was was, like... Charlotte at her best, just being like a full blown heel, mm-hmm. just, just, just totally kind of eating it up and just uh, you know digging into Becky. The same yeah. stuff you mentioned there. Um, I thought it was very effective. Um, I loved the sucker punch. The yeah, su- the sucker punch was done so well. Ooh. Where you just, well, I wasn't expecting it, you know. And so I, yeah, I really enjoyed that. And this, and same for uh, Charlotte chasing her yeah. down and beating her on the ramp, beating her down on the ramp. Um, all in all, good segment. Yeah. Um, I think that you know we had talked about the uh, the possibility of Charlotte being, uh, as Becky says, uh, shoehorned into yeah. shoehorned Charlotte, shoehorned you Charlotte, know, shoehorned Hashtag. into her stuff. Um, I do still think that last night was an indication that Charlotte's going to be part of that match. I don't yeah. think we're going to get just one on one Becky versus Charlotte Mania. No, she did mention it. She I'm sorry, s- Becky versus uh, Ronda. Ronda Mania. Yeah, and well, she did mention. She said you got yourself into that match, and you had, so already the whole idea of like how you did it, how you got into that situation is suspect. So uh, Elimination Chamber is going to do something about that. I mean, it, there's going to be something they're building up to. I'm sure Becky's going to be mad for being attacked like that and her knee being attacked on her knee. So already, just like last time, which was done for, you know, for real, where she got her nose fractured, they might use this knee in- a- injury angle to be the reason why Charlotte beats her elimination chamber and then why people are nervous if whether Becky's going to beat Ronda or Charlotte's going to beat Ronda in a triple threat at Mania. That's certainly possible. I, I was thinking the same thing while watching yeah. last night. I was thinking, oh, they were smart. They set up this angle injury mm-hmm. to play off of the, the emotion of the in- the real injury that they couldn't play off of a few months right, ago. Right, right. That's know? a good point. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, oh, well, now we can actually play off a fake injury angle, yeah. you know? Because even her sitting in her car later in the show when she was saying, like, I'm not going to be on the shelf again. Yeah. I thought that was smart. I liked it. I mm-hmm. liked them kind of um, 
it helps build Becky back as an underdog. As a an little underdog, bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 and, and, and as much as I enjoy the heel uh, Becky, um, I also think you know the crowd being behind her as an underdog isn't bad, and it seems like the way they'll get around having. The way they'd get around not having to turn Ronda Rousey heel is by putting Charlotte in there as full blown heel Charlotte. Yeah. So then there's like, oh well, there's still good guy. Be- there's still good guy Ronda Rousey. There's there's tweener Becky, and then there's heel Charlotte. That's kind of I feel like they're gonna go. So that way, no one's booing yeah. the two good guys they want and cheer going into it. I think you made a great point here this uh, earlier when you were talking about how the last time Becky was a heel or I mean, Charlotte was a heel. It wasn't now, like, and that's true, and that's the thing that people need to understand as you watch wrestling is the nuance even within being a heel. Are you the heel that's going to get dirty and down in the dirt and say the mean stuff and, like, you know, go at someone and, and you know, just kind of dismiss them as nobody? Or are you going to be the heel like she was last time when she was above them all and was offended that they would even think they'd be on her level, whereas this version of a heel is let's get into that dirty pit and let's see who the hell come and climbs out. That's the vibe it. I get. For yeah. sure, yeah, absolutely. Like before, she was kind of like, "Well, I'm Ric Flair's yeah. daughter. Look at me." And now it's more like, "Hey, I'm the queen of WWE. I've been killing it. Like mm-hmm. for two, like you best respect me. I like, I like that. Yeah, you know, I'm, yeah. into, I'm, I'm into that little bit of a shift. And I'm, I, I think she's doing really well right now in her role. Yeah, damn it. I know. That's that's why I think she's gonna get added. She she's is totally doing a really good job. Then what happens to Oscar? Who's gonna face Oscar for the title? <laughs> Oscar wasn't even on the show last she night. She wasn't on the show. Which is weird. And she defended her title and won it. I mean I know. defended her title rather. She and had so, Becky Lynch tap out. Yeah. You'd think she'd mention that. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, oh, Becky's scared. I made her tap out, so of course she's gonna go over to Rhonda. Yeah, yeah. Mm, I, I I don't know. We'll see, man. There's, there'll be something. Well, and, and this will be interesting, too, because, like, will she have a one-on-one match at Elimination Chamber, or are they just going to save her to WrestleMania? Asuka? Yeah, we'll see. I would imagine. Who's out there? At this point, I would imagine that match won't be for the title. It'd be for, like, I don't know. That's a good Who, question. No one yeah, I, don't, I don't know. That's you a can't good be question. Mandy. It's too soon, and it's not enough hype yet. No, and Mandy's going to be part of the, with, pro, the uh, tag title Yeah, the tag thing. title thing for Elimination Chamber. And yeah, I, I don't it can't know. be that's, that's a good question. Yeah. I, I I wonder what they're gonna do with Asuka as well in the yeah. next few months if Charlotte is part of uh the, the right. Ronda the Ronda Becky stuff as well. Yeah. I, yeah. I I don't really know. I, I it's it always changes so much. Yeah. yeah. You know, and especially on the road to WrestleMania where it's just like they're all they're shifting things, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, they have certain things locked in place, but not everything, you know. If you could trade Asuka for Bailey, would you do it for the four horsemen? If you could trade Asuka for Bailey and the Four Horsewomen, would you do it? In no, I wouldn't because I mean I really think that like you know I was a I was a huge Bailey fan mm-hmm. in NXT, so she was like a big part of that. Yeah. I, I think you know as much as her main roster stuff maybe hasn't been as successful, mm-hmm. um, you know she was such a part of that. She yeah. in NXT the Four Horsewomen stuff that no it wouldn't really I, no okay. I. I I'm still a Bailey fan at heart. All right, just uh, just uh, in my mind, I was just kicking it around. <laughs> that could be something for Oscar to do is to be part of the four horsewoman angle as the four horsewoman with these ladies. But right, it would be weird if it happened. Yes. Um, all right, so let's move on from one Japanese superstar Oscar to another. That's Shinsuke Nakamura. He took on our truth. My God, forty-seven year old our truth. There, what's up? He beat Shinsuke. What are you talking about? Shinsuke just got the title back. Two days ago at freaking Royal Rumble, and here he is losing it to uh, uh, to our truth. What I mean, we were enjoying the our truth run, but this was actually not that good of a match, and I was surprised that they gave him the title overall. And then what happens later, even more so, which we'll get to. But what did you think about? Does this make any sense? Are they burying Shinsuke now? Well, you know, it's interesting that I don't think they're burying Shinsuke. Okay, I, I, I I'm assuming. And we're going to get to it, you said. But, like, we talked about uh, Rusev and Lana yeah. on the Rumble recap. Right. We talked about how, like, you were asking, like, well, yep. what, what are they going to do with them now, you know? Um, and I had thought, may- I had said I thought maybe they were going to turn him heel. Yeah. I very much got that vibe again la- la- after last night. He's absolutely heel Yeah, he's back to time. being a heel now. Yeah. So Full on. if they wanted a face to be the United States champion... I get it, you know, yeah. like I get it. Truth's been entertaining. Yeah, He's been, we we've said how it's been like a uh, a arrival of his career, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so I, you know, I. I want to be against it, but I kind of yeah. like it. You know, okay. I I think that you know it's like he's never gonna win another major title again or anything like right, that. Right, so right. I mean, 
people are liking the whole dance break thing. It's a fun thing that he's doing right now with Carmella. Right. I like that he didn't even realize he won the title. I thought that was kind of mm. fun because he's so used to losing. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. You know what? I thought that was a nice little touch. Um, yeah, so so I mean, all of that I liked. I did think it, I, I, I'm just wondering what... I'm wondering what the plan is for Rusev. Like, yeah. is it Rusev and as a heel now against Truth going forward for the next few? Is it all three of them? I don't know. Yeah, I'm interested though. I'm very interested to see where it goes. The triple threat. Oh, would that make sense? I mean, not I don't really. Know. I don't know because the two heels versus one face. It me it feels weird. It really it to me way. when I see something like that, it's one of those situations where I look at it and I go like, well, WWE doesn't know what to do with them yes. right now. So they're like, well, this is just a feud where we like we like these guys, but we don't really know what to do with them right now. So like, yeah. let's just have them all do stuff together. Let's see what organically let's happens. Let's see what happens. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, I I the so I I I think the truth as as United States champion as yeah. much as I like Shinsuke Nakamura Shinsuke Nakamura like already had that run yeah if anything I kind of felt like they had him win the title at Royal Rumble because they felt bad that he won the year before and now he's at he was on the pre show oh you maybe know, it was like yeah. oh man we got our last Royal Rumble winner on the pre show let's have him win something yeah. you know and then it was like well we're gonna turn Rusev heel anyways yeah let's just have him do that quick swap around so I don't I don't dislike it right. it, was a, it was a fun moment to me. Um, but something shouldn't be messed with, and this is where I start to lose. Because what happens that is it next is that Rusev challenges our uh, truth, and in some insane world, our truth beat Rusev and Nakamura in the same night. Nakamura, who has fought strong style for a majority of his career, was somehow beaten by our truth. Uh, Rusev, who's as strong as an ox, was somehow beating by, beaten by a forty-seven-year-old our truth. It was just it just really bothered me on, okay. on so many levels. I get liking it, but to me, it's always like it's nice to cheer for the possibility of something like this happening. But then when it happens, now you're like, well, shit, now it's real, and now we have to deal with the fact that our truth is champion. What does this mean for the United States title? Because well, it's not like the United defending it. It's not like the United States title is held in such high regard anyways. You know? I think is it depends it? on who holds it. It's always been kind of a throwaway title, no. in my opinion. Oh. Right? Am I wrong? RVD's had it before, and it's been great when RVD's had it, I think. You're and digging way back, Well, though. I'm just saying. You I mean, that's legacy. like, you got to dig way back to RVD to find a good run with the U.S. title. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a dig back right I think that's there. a fair point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to find something. But I do think that, you know. It has uh, had prestige in the past. That's I will say, say this much, though. I think Del that, Rio. Del Rio was great with it. Del yeah. Rio was great with it. Yeah. It was right. called the America's title or whatever. I thought Russo's been good with it too when he's yeah. had it at different times. When he had it that last time, the, the, yeah. the original run with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that with R Truth winning it, I, I'm assuming they they want to have a face as champion, right? As the US champion right, right now, with right. Daniel Bryan as the heel. I'm assuming they wanted to turn Rusev heel and they realized, like, oh, well, we got to swap, we got to get it off of him to get mm -hmm. it back on another face. So, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't dislike it. I think also that like, look, uh, for a long time I would have rolled my eyes at our truth winning any title. It's fair. I would have been like our truth, but I mean we've all been singing his praises the yeah. past couple weeks. I mean everyone's been saying like, hey, he's kind of like wrestling way better than mm -hmm. he's ever wrestled. So you know what? He's way over this thing. And he's a loyal soldier yeah, for is. the company, he for is. WWE, for Vince. You know, does what he's told, mm -hmm. doesn't cause problems or anything like that. Um, tries to spread a positive message. And so, you know, if they want to re reward him yeah. with a title run of some sort, sure, I'm into it. Yeah, and he's made, you know, he's made most of these gimmicks that would normally fall apart in, a, in lesser wrestlers' hands work. That Jimmy gimmick, good God almighty. He made it great. How the hell did that work? <laughs> Little Jimmy was the best. Little Jimmy was the best. Golden Truth was fantastic as yeah. well. I love that. So, you know, he makes things work when he when he when when they find the right thing, but he makes it all work. Agreed. Right? He rarely missteps. That's why I'm okay with it. Because yeah. I feel like he's... I can see that. I, I don't think it's going to be like a long run, but right. you know what? Truth deserves it. Yeah. He, you deserve it. One of those ones, you know? <laughs> Do you think they're giving it to him in lieu of Angle? Like maybe Lou, Angle was looking at IC Championship possibly when they were bringing him back, but then... Mm. Like no, as a, I, don't, so, I wouldn't okay. think it has anything to do with Angle. I would more so say that it's like his long time with the company of right. like giving him, you know, giving him something. Yeah, yeah. Also, I should mention this: <laughs> that guy you blocked today on Twitter. Oh, I blocked the guy. Yeah, <laughs> that jerk off. Yeah, drink. Yeah, drink now. Yeah, drink again, and then come find me. I'm gonna body slam you off the Collider Studios. <laughs> right when he sent like the third one, yeah. I was like, oh, "Rook is gonna block this yep. guy." I know it. And then he DM'd me, letting me know that you blocked him, and that he was sorry, and that he was just like he was just giving you a hard time, and that he didn't mean it. Who the fuck are you to give me a hard time? <laughs>
<laughs> That's what I'm telling you. I tell the fans and my followers all the time. People go crazy. What do you mean you 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 train your followers? I do. You fuck with me, you get blocked or muted. There's no joke about it. So you want to make your you want to make your bones with 92 followers? Guess what I'm gonna do? Block you. You know why? Because you're irrelevant to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's my heel promo for the day. All right. <laughs> all right. Listen, listen, look at this thing. Rusev interrupted our truth celebration and then it did all this kind of jazz. Now, they beat down our truth. So is this a new tag team now, Nakamura and Rusev? Because I'm going to tell you right now, if Lana is the valet for these two, I am down with this uh, tag team. Because you've got brutality on one side and you've got strong style on another. This could be a, a accidentally dangerous tag team yeah. that they put together. I felt the same way. Watch, I was yeah. I, when I saw this segment, this backstage segment. I said, one, I liked that we saw the Good Brothers, mm -hmm. good, and two, yeah, I was like, you know, never would have thought that I would. Th this is a team I'm into, but I am very into this yeah. team. Once, like it was, once it was mentioned. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that they they do have potential as a tag team. However, I do feel like. They keep doing this with Rusev of like putting him in random tag yeah, teams. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of hope it's only a one time thing based on that face to face where mm -hmm. they were like, this is a one time thing. Don't screw me. Right. Although that's usually how all these <laughs> tag teams that are random Cesaro tag teams start. Cesaro and uh, yeah, Sheamus. True. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. I, I do like the potential of them teaming, though. It sounds like a good team. I want to see them against the bar. I like it. Maybe next week against the bar or against, uh, well, no, we'll, we'll get to that in just a second. But maybe they, they have a shot at doing something here to see what their chemistry is like. And if the fans get behind them as a heel tag team, you got to come up with a name, though. It can't just be Nakamura. And th you got to have some kind of name. Like even ba the bar works for uh, Sheamus and, uh, and uh, Cesaro. Nothing immediately comes to yeah, mind. Yeah, I couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> Before we started the show, I, I was sitting around thinking about it, and I was like, nothing comes to mind. <laughs> Someone more inventive than us maybe come, will come up for a, a, t a nickname for those guys. But uh, uh, So then, but then, uh, you know, we have uh, uh, Anderson and Gallows challenging them to a tag team. So I guess we'll get that Next first. Week. Yeah, but then later on, I would like to see if they do take care of business here, which would be weird because who wins this? Because if Gallows and Anderson lose, Tumbling right back down again. And, yeah. you know, if Rusev and Nakamura lose, what? why'd you put them together? Well, the only thing I can think of is that, hopefully, is that this is only a one-time thing, like we said. Oh, okay. And that Gallows and Anderson get a win because Rusev and Nakamura can't, yeah. uh, can't be on the same page. Yeah, fighting each other or whatever. And then yeah. Truth gets put back in there, and it's a three-way, and it all kind of makes sense. That's what I'm thinking. That works. Also, along the heel lines thing. Yeah, that whole time I had mentioned that Lana was being quiet because I th I thought that she was like secretly still a heel, but she was trying to hold it down. Yeah, when they were beating up Truth, you could see her in uh, the back. Yeah, uh, standing on, on the ground, and she had this like evil look on her face, like she was old Lana again. I don't know if anyone noticed, but I was looking at it. Yeah, and she had this like, mm, "That's mm. my Rusev," you know, and I, yeah. I like that. I, I did too. I, I like heel Lana, so I, and Rusev. So she got into it with Carmella too. So that word. So Carmella's firmly a face, uh, as we've been saying for a while. Uh, but having Lana come back, maybe the Russian accent comes back fully now again too. Hopefully, yeah. Although she really didn't have it in that WWE.com interview for after the Royal Rumble, but we'll see. How come no one's talking about this? This should be talked about on every wrestling show. Her, <laughs> her missing accent. Her Kevin Costner in uh, Prince of Thieves accent that just disappears halfway through the movie. Uh, all right, so then Andrade uh, was uh, attacked Rey Mysterio from behind after Rey was in the ring, and Zelina came out looking absolutely hot as hell to, and, and did her promo. Uh, and then uh, Andre. so they're going to keep this going, right? So what do we expect we'll see in Elimination Chamber between these guys? Um, well, first, uh, you're going to get us in trouble when you always, when you hit on, you're going to get yourself in trouble with your girlfriend when you keep talking about Zelina Vega. She's beautiful. What do you want me to say? <laughs> Zelina's beautiful. I'm not saying I want to go after her. I'm saying she's beautiful. I look at a piece of art from Leonardo da Vinci. Am I trying to get with that piece of art when I say it is beautiful? No, <laughs> I'm just saying it's beautiful. Um, Mandy's another conversation. All right, let's move on. <laughs> we should, we me and Corey Graves, we eye to eye on Mandy. Yeah, the Mandy thing was later in the episode. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, want to yeah, skip yeah. that one because yeah. I, 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 I was interested in that. Um, the Zelina yeah. thing. Um, yeah, no, I liked it. I think that you know, I I, uh, I liked uh, Andrade coming out in the suit and and doing the the suplexes and stuff. Yeah, on yeah, him. yeah. I thought that was cool. He gave him a little Eddie Eddie vibe. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, there wasn't a lot here, yeah, I don't right, think. Right. Um, it just keeps me going. I'm just asking you what you think is going to happen. Oh. Do you think they'll go cage, or do you think it's just regular no DQ match at at Elimination Chamber? Mm, I could see them being... Well, no, they're not in the Elimination Chamber match, because that got announced, right? right? They're right. not part of that. I feel like it'll just be a regular match between yeah. the two of them, right? Okay. That's my guess is that they're gonna. Uh, I, I feel like they're gonna Cesaro and Sheamus the situation where mm -hmm. they're gonna do. They're eventually gonna do a best of seven series, oh. and it'll lead to WrestleMania, the final one, or something okay. like that. That okay. seems to make sense to me. Yeah, there's and, a future down the road where they where Andrade turns face as well with him and Ray. That'd be awesome. Because well. I really think that the, the the it's so e it would be so easy to do so with him if they do like mm -hmm. a series of matches that ends at WrestleMania with one of them winning and then the two of them like. Show respect and hug. Mm -hmm. I mean, that Andrade will be over huge. I mean, he's already, yeah. I think, uh, you know, a big deal. But I think that will really seal the deal for yeah. for Andrade. Um, so I kind of hope that's the direction they go. Um, but yeah, I liked the segment. I yeah. thought it was good. I, I was sad. I was like, oh, Smojo and Rey Mysterio, that'll be dope. And then it didn't happen. I was yeah. like, oh, bastard Andrade. <laughs> and then they'll put together the L W O. All right. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's move on here. Uh, also, oh. you said something on Twitter. Ray wasn't in the LWO. I know, I know. I, okay. I, I, I know people say that. Did people get back to you? I, I, did we reply to you no, on that No, a lot of people okay. did. Correct me on that. I think they know that, you know, I just like the idea of him putting it back together. Yeah. I didn't mean that he put it together originally. Yeah. I just meant putting them, that idea, back together. That makes sense. Yeah, that's what I meant. I, that makes sense. Yeah, I'll block that guy, too. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, let's, let's move on to the Manny thing you talked about. What did you think about that? Did you like okay, it? Okay, as someone the break who it watched down. Tough Enough, yeah. I loved this. Yeah. I I absolutely loved this. I was like, oh my God, they actually gave me a believable reason as to why Mandy, uh, this, yeah. the whole beef, they actually gave me a believable reason for the whole beef and I loved it. I was yeah. like, no way. That's awesome. Like I watched Tough Enough, totally remember that happening. Yep. Totally think that it's awesome that they called back to one of their own shows, which they rarely yep. do. Um, and I feel like they haven't even really mentioned the Tough Enough aspect of things with Sonya and Mandy in general. No, you're right. Um, maybe once or twice because of the page uh, initially or whatever, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's not something that's often mentioned. Similar to Velveteen Dream, how right. it's only mentioned. Every, it's only mentioned usually by other people who are trying to roast him about it, and he yeah. pretends like it never happened. Um, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I. Love Loved, loved, loved them throwing back to that. I thought it was so smart. Great storytelling. Um, and especially because, you know, then she said the whole, like, I couldn't stop crying and it made my relationship end. So that's why I want to end <laughs> her relationship. I was like, wow, they gave full motivation for Mandy. That makes sense. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. So cheesy or whatever. I just liked the that they gave me something believable where I go. All right, well, all that made sense now. Yeah, yeah, Great. Yeah. That doesn't usually happen in WWE where they're like, they explain something and it actually go, makes sense. And it's something that happened years ago. Yeah, right. Right? Yeah. I, I liked it too. I thought it was brilliant the way they did. I don't, and I don't know if they had this plan going in from the beginning <laughs> I feel or like if they, they probably thought the didn't. crap they were getting, like, we got to find something. <laughs> And some guy running through the WWE offices. I have with a piece of paper. I have it. I have it. <laughs> running down the hall yeah, of Vince McMahon's like, office. I've got the answer. I've got the golden ticket, Mr. McMahon. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> uh, uh, so staring at my dino and eating, <laughs> eating food, meat, eating a steak. Leave me alone. <laughs> uh, I this intern out of my office. Sonya get more... Uh, uh, FaceTime as well on the camera is great. Yep. Like she's, she may end up becoming something really great down the road. And I love that they're both getting equal opportunities to shine. And now being in an elimination chamber match, so this is going to be an uh, interbrand match now for the title. So I think they said that initially that it was going to yeah. be different brands. I'm hoping that they have an NXT team in the match as well. But right, they haven't fully said how many qualifiers wow. are there. Who would they? you have for NXT? Ayo Shiray and Kyrie oh, Sane. Bring them up awesome. to the main roster. Yep. They're both such Especially good after the Rumble. Yeah, yep. and I think that they both, I, I, as much as like EO like has only been in WWE for a short amount, of, or NXT for a short amount of time, I feel like they'd be a good addition to the to that tag team division. She felt ready when I was watching Rumble. Yeah, she yeah. had that stumble, but other than that, she felt ready. Like, Agreed. She could do it. And Kyrie's such a good character. Hell like yeah. Like together when they came out on NXT TV last week, I think it was last week, they had like a cool entrance together and I was like, that would look odd. People would like that. Like they like Oscar, they'd like that. Yep. It's like colorful, cool characters. I, I thought it was cool. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, yeah, I guess we couldn't do that, could we? 
What? It would, I would love it if uh, a Tony Storm and Rhea team, teamed up for this thing, too. Ooh, that'd be cool. <laughs> that'd be a great tag team. Although I feel like Rhea, she needs no, she wants no friends. <laughs> she doesn't need no friends. She, Jesus Christ. She uh, she tweeted. Uh, oh, God. It was God. so funny. Mick Foley tweeted a yeah. thing about how much he likes Rhea. He said, he tagged her. And he said, Rhea Ripley, let me put to rest the rumor started by me an hour ago that you need to adjust your attitude a wee bit. In truth, I hear amazing things about your attitude. I see you as a future WWE Raw or SmackDown Live champion and a major player for years to come. And then Rhea replied to him and she said, that's right, get back in your lane, old man. Your days have passed. I am the now and the future, so you can just sit there in your trackies and your flannel shirt and admire my work. Oh my god! (laughs) <laughs> wow she's the best yeah how's it going man Rhea's yeah. the best that's how you do it yeah uh well speaking of something maybe that you uh, that's not how you do it Shane McMahon uh, <laughs> surprises the Miz uh, you know he does his in this uh title celebration I don't know what'd you think of this I thought it was so dumb yep I saw so, I saw a tweet right before I came here. Why ah. would he, didn't he hate the Miz and now he's organizing a celebration for the Miz yeah it's and and the <laughs> Look, I like the Miz. I, I think the Miz's dad is super fun when he's on TV. I guess <laughs> you're not as big of a fan. Well, no, because like, didn't he? Wasn't he not proud of his son? So hey, you, I'm proud of you because you won, not because you fought and you, you know, you tried hard. I, I'm proud of you because you won the titles. Now I'm proud of you. I just, it seems weird to me. Oh, I'm trying to find this hilarious tweet that I saw this morning. Ah, I don't know mm-hmm. who tweeted it, but it said something along the lines of like. Uh, like, like Miz's dad, uh, Miz wins Intercontinental Championship, whack. Like <laughs> Miz, Miz main events WrestleMania successfully, whack. Miz wins Intercontinental Championship eight times, n- dumb. Like, like Miz uh, wins tag team titles with Shane McMahon. Hell yeah, dude, or whatever. Now like, you're now, talking. Now I'm now I'm proud of you, or whatever. So. You did it with the boss's son. That's real. <laughs> Oh, uh, I totally butchered that person's tweet, but it was funnier the way they worded it. But it's the truth. It was yeah. like when I was watching this, I was thinking to myself, like, what? Is, like, what is any of this? Yeah. I still don't get it. I don't get where they're going with it. I don't get how this is supposed to make them as likable. I don't get how this is supposed to make Shane more likable. Yeah. I don't get. As, I don't get any of this. I don't, Everything Ryan said. I just. I just. I just. I, it's not entertaining to watch. I I I realize that the Miz himself is entertaining and mm-hmm. that he is doing his damnedest to get it over. Like I've said, I think that he is doing a good job of trying. Yeah. I just think that the the creative being served is bleh, in whack. this one is whack. Is whack. Yeah, is whack <laughs> on this one. Um, I just yeah, all around, I'm just not a fan of this at all. In fact, I, I was watching it. I was watching the show on my computer, so yeah. I had to watch it in pieces. Uh, like on one of those websites or whatever, and like I still DVR it, but yeah. I had to like, you know, watch it in pieces. And I accidentally skipped this segment. Oh, <clears throat> and then I went back, and then I clicked the next one, and it was the tag team match, which yeah. comes next. They announced yeah. that they're gonna, uh, you know, the, these guys are gonna wrestle for a shot against them. And I, I heard them. I, I saw the match start, the tag team match, and them say, "Oh, this is because the Miz and Shane just had this thing." And I went, I said to myself, like. Do I even want to go back and watch that? <laughs> I, I just, I re, once I realized I skipped it, I was like, do I go back and I watch it? I did. I begrudgingly did yeah, after the show. Um, and it was it was what I expected it yep. to be. Yep. And it was. It thoroughly. <laughs> thoroughly. Well, you, you mentioned the tag team uh, matches elimination match. You had Sheamus and Cesaro versus the Usos versus the New Day versus Heavy Machinery. Heavy Machinery getting a shot to go for the titles already. Good God Almighty. Uh, I thought this was a fun-ass match. Four incredibly different tag teams with different styles. uh, And Machinery held their own, I thought, for coming up just a few days ago. Uh, And I really enjoyed the result, the Usos, which we've been talking about for weeks now, that they deserve a shot at these things and carrying them again. And I love that they took it. And yeah. we'll. See, I think they have every right to take it off Shane and Miz. I, I'm, I'd be okay Please with God. that. God. Um, I think. I think that Heavy Machinery really had a standout performance. Hell here. yeah! You know, um, they've always they're always even in NXT they're always kind of like a joke team. They didn't mm-hmm. have like a ton of like standout matches. I don't think that I can recall. Um, I'd agree with that. They had a couple. They're one enjoyable or two. to watch, but there's not like they go. Oh my god, no. that was a match. Yeah, yeah. like nothing like takeover match right. or anything like right, that. Right, right. Um, and so yeah, I thought this did a really good job of putting them over. I think that 
um, the 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 segment between the the, the moment between B, uh, Miz Miz Biggie and and Otis yeah was great that I I, I I it was like one of those moments similar to Kyrie Sane and Charlotte where I said to myself like these are two people I didn't realize that I needed to see wrestle a full <laughs> match against each other until right now you know and I was like man give me that I yeah. want I want now I want New Day versus Heavy Machinery ASAP because yeah. I was already liking their interactions as friends but it would be so great to watch them wrestle each other too i think that'd be awesome um i think that them pinning the new day yeah. was so smart because yep. i think that it, it heavy machinery needed some a substantial uh win over someone yep. but they didn't win the whole match so right. it was like a substantial win over a, a team that is teflon that yep. can lose to anybody and they're going to still be just as over at this point yep. um so i think that the New Day doesn't need the belt. That's what I'm saying. Like New Day doesn't need wins, belts. They're over right now. Yeah. There's like they can do no wrong. Yeah, basically, can do no wrong. you know, they're 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 untouchable. Right? They're untouchable. Yeah. And so um, I think I, so. I thought it was very cool that they put over heavy machinery like that. Um, I really really enjoyed the the Big E thing. I'm trying to think of what else. I thought just Sheamus and Cesaro and and the Usos really killed it too. Yeah, like they yeah. always, I mean, they always do. Yeah. But but it was really um, just overall. I really enjoyed the match. I think that it was like. You know, one of those things where you go like, oh, well, SmackDown has the the more athletic mm -hmm. matches, and mm -hmm. this was like a great example of that. I can't believe how far I've come with the Usos and with the Bar. Like, I hated the Bar when they put in that whole seven Me too. match series. If we had been doing those recap, I would have destroyed every one of those matches. <laughs> Everyone and call, just called it useless, waste of time. And then, but putting them to, even when they came together as a tag team, I was like, they're boring. The, the, I don't want to see them. That I don't like their styles the, as a combo and blah, blah, blah. And it seemed like they didn't know if they could. But it was when they went on that hiatus and came back that they had just a different approach. And you missed them. And You're they like, became friends sudden, on that hiatus. Yeah, they became I real friends. I think that friend, really like, helped. Yeah, and, and they became shows. legit friends. And now it's like, oh, I like these guys. They're friends. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. like one of those just thrown together teams like you yeah. like we were talking about with Shinsuke Nakamura and, and a Rusev, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I completely agree with you in that regard. They're like a fully formed team now. Yeah. I, I really, really like it. Um, they're probably... Are they the best tag team in WWE right now? The Usos are there, too. In terms of just, like, in-ring... Nah, man. It's hard to say. There's so many good tag teams in WWE right now. Like, the Revival are so good when given an opportunity. Mm -hmm. The, you know, Sanity, too, when given the opportunity. New Day are awesome. That's hard to say. It's really hard to it's compare hard all to those say. teams. Yeah, it's hard. That's a really tough one. But I think you can make a stronger case for this uh, than you could have 12 months ago. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a that's a positive for the New Day. I mean, for uh, the bar overall. So it's, yeah, it's also interesting to me that there was four killer teams in this match, mm -hmm. and there's still so many more teams on SmackDown. Yeah, yeah, I know. Right? Yeah. Like ones that we don't really see that often. Yeah. So I'm. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Like. Like the Good Brothers, you know, the right, club. Right, we got one more thing to get to, but I want to ask you something, because just right now you, you made me think about something. You look at um, Shock to the System. Those guys down there. The Undisputed NXT, Era? Uh, the Undisputed Era. You look at them down. You talk about best tag team in WWE. Those guys, entertaining matches every single time. Near near losses, incredible how they worked their near losses. Mm -hmm. This last, at NXT TakeOver Phoenix, that was an incredible match, again, mm -hmm. to start off the show. In the, do you think there's room for those guys up top? I mean, of course there's room in for SmackDown, them. SmackDown, could they slide into SmackDown? Do they need Adam Cole to be with them? That's well, the yeah, thing. I, I, well, baby. There's a lot of questions you've thrown at oh, me. Oh, sorry, here. I'm sorry, These Ryan. are all separate ones. Yeah, all right, fair. I do think, um, I love Undisputed Era. <laughs> Kyle O'Reilly is probably one of my favorite wrestlers. So good. Like, a personal favorite wrestlers. Cool. But I love Kyle O'Reilly as a singles wrestler. Yeah, yeah. So when you ask me... Um, could they fare without Adam Cole? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, to be honest with you, I like Adam Cole a lot, so I don't want this to be, come across like I don't like Adam Cole. But in my opinion, the the, the pecking order, Kyle O'Reilly is the star of Undisputed Era. Wow. In my opinion. I, I think that he's over the most with people with the whole guitar thing yeah. that he's doing. And I believe, I've said this back from when I was watching Kyle O'Reilly in PWG, I feel like Kyle O'Reilly could be like the next Daniel Bryan if given the opportunity. Oh, like wow. Kyle O'Reilly's so good to me. I literally one time when I when I heard he was coming back to PWG mm -hmm. after he'd had a long hiatus away because he was champion. I when he was champion, my yeah. favorite time in PWG. I was like, oh, I never miss a show. I loved him when he was PWG champion. And um, when I heard he was coming back, 
uh, for a show. I remember I was I had a family thing, and I had to I had to go to the family thing. So I literally like I bought tickets, and I sh- I left the family things just in time so I could get there. And I remember running into the the Legion Hall as fast as I could because I was gonna miss it. And like I got inside, and I was standing in the back, and like right when I got there, like out of breath, the lights went out. And they came back up, and Kyle Riley was in the ring, and I was just like, "Yeah, I saw yeah!" Um, so I, I, I am like the biggest Kyle Damn, Riley fan. Okay. I love Kyle Riley. I didn't um, know that. And and my best friend Kevin Silva, like he's the biggest Adam Cole fan. So we would always like argue about it because those two, for a long time, they they started as a tag yeah, team, yeah, but they yeah. also had a rivalry yes, for a long time. And so, um, I, and also. Roderick Strong was probably the best heel champion PWG's ever had. Yeah, I man, Roderick Strong was the best. Yeah. So yes, I think they all could fare well on their own. Um, sim- you know, like Seth, they're all kind of like similar size to Seth Rollins. I think you mm-hmm. know, well, Adam Cole's a little smaller too. But yeah, I just I feel like yeah, I I, I absolutely. Um, I do feel like they'd have to come up all together though because they're they are a good. Team right now, it'd yeah. be kind of silly to not bring them all up together. They've packaged them well. They've done. It. They've got this whole NWO like vibe yeah, yeah. for a new generation. So yeah, I, I would like to see them brought up as a whole, absolutely. Um, and then hopefully Kyle O'Reilly turns on them one day, or like he finally turns face and realizes he doesn't need the undisputed era. Right. That's, that's my dream to see. <laughs> and then he becomes super famous. <laughs> Dude, we just found a crush. You have a crush on Kyle O'Reilly. No, no, crush on He's my Please. favorite. He's in my top five. Oh, you know, you're coming about Zelina. Did your girlfriend know about your crush on Kyle O'Reilly? I didn't say how beautiful posters? Kyle O'Reilly is. I just said he's one of my favorite wrestlers. Did you not say how beautiful? I feel like it was there in between the lines. In between the lines, it was there. <laughs> no, I, I really... I, I respect that. I've just got, been a big Kyle O'Reilly, O'Reilly fan. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I respect that. <laughs> well, a lot of people love... Someone who love is uh, Daniel Bryan. Uh, you know, here he is, did his great promo, got a new belt, which you say you want to buy now. With the I day. like it. It's, it's cool a belt. cool belt, man. <laughs> it's a cool belt. Not going to lie. Uh, I wish in the Schmodown they let us do those little plates uh, That's cool. on the belts. That would be cool. Would be also have a little outlaw with the fucking Why don't oh, they? Because of the money expenses. It's not. What if you bought your own side plate? I, I'm not one of those people that likes to buy my own belt and build it to make it, you know, I like is to earn my belts. Is there someone that does that? Maybe. I like to. <laughs> I like to earn my own belts. I don't like to buy and make my own belts. <laughs> Enough said there. All right, so Daniel Bryan sa- does this interview, says what he says, goes crazy about it, dishes the championship, says he wants his own thing. Throws it in the trash. Throws it in the trash, a la Medusa. S- Medusa, that's right. Uh, and, and that was like, wow. So to bring it back. And then uh, you know, he's, and then uh, it comes out that they, they're going to have an elimination chamber. He's got to defend the belt at elimination chamber. As if he hadn't already defended an incredible match with AJ Styles. Now he's got to go defend elimination chamber against Randy Orton and Mustafa Ali. Props to him. I get Jeff Hardy for some reason. Samoa Joe. Uh, so this is going to be... For some reason. Come on! Enough with Jeff. <laughs> Jeff's just fodder at this point, you know, cannon fodder at this point. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is going to be an interesting match yeah. for the belt, and I'm excited about it. Yeah, it was weird when I was seeing it. I was like, man, this is like minus Randy Orton. This is like one of those, like, thing. this is one of those matches that I would have made in, like, uh, Extreme Warfare Revenge back in the yeah. day. Like, book it myself. Uh, and even maybe Randy Orton back then, because he was, I, I didn't dis- I never disliked Randy Orton, but it yeah. was a, it's an interesting mix up of people right there. Um, I, I loved when. Uh, when Mustafa Ali came out and Randy Orton was just like, didn't you get eliminated by a girl in the match? <laughs> and he tried to say something and then Samoa Joe's music and he was like, oh, damn it. And yeah. I was like, that was funny. That was a good moment. Um, but the, the, the belt stuff itself, um, I, I was kind of surprised they yeah. had him do the throwing in the trash thing because... They're so the because they were so mad yeah. about the Medusa thing back in the day, and I realized that was unscripted, so that's mm-hmm. why they were so angry about it. But they just because it's such like a They've hyped it up as such a disrespectful thing to throw the title in the trash. I was kind of surprised they went there, but I did like it. I thought mm-hmm. it, it, it continues to make Daniel Bryan look like an asshole. Yeah. Um, when he was talking to first Rowan. Oh my God. I love that Rowan has the recycle <sighs> logo in his Titan Tron now for you- his name. That's a great touch. I liked that Daniel Bryan put over Eric Rowan yeah. so that he was like, no, he's really smart, that he reads all these books, that, you know, I, he was saying, art, you know, authors I don't know, but yeah. like, you know, he was, he was saying something I loved it. I thought that was great. Um, I, I, It's funny, you know, when I was watching it, I was thinking to myself last night, I feel like Daniel Bryan has to like Ro- Rowan and Harper personally. Yeah. Because 
first when he came back, everyone was like, why did they have him do this feud with Bludgeon Bros mm-hmm. after the big cast mm-hmm. thing? And you were like, and, and I just remember I was like, really? Bludgeon Brothers? Yeah. And now he's doing stuff with one of the Bludgeon Brothers again. He's got Rowan by his side. And I was thinking to myself, I bet you it's Daniel who wanted to do that Bludgeon Brothers oh, thing back then. Could be. And I bet you it's him who was like, hey, Rowan would be a good addition to me. He's cleared. Right. Um, I also thought it was funny when I was watching this because I was thinking about when Bludgeon Brothers debuted, mm-hmm. man, Vince put man so much effort into that yeah. gimmick. No, you don't even know. Like I never oh. even reported how much he put work he put into that gimmick. Wow. Like Vince McMahon was heavily involved in the creation of the Bludgeon Brothers gimmick. They shot a vignette. Didn't wow. like the first vignette. Did, had to do it over again. He was like very involved in the creation of the the the, the gear they were mm-hmm. wearing. Where he was like, no, it needs to be more like this. So he was like very hands on with that project. Hmm. But I remember when they debuted, everyone was like, oh, they're just the War Machine ripoff. Yeah, like yeah, they yeah, were very yeah. similar to War Raiders, who are now War Raiders. War Raiders, right? But they were like, it was very. It felt very War Machine ripoffy. Mm-hmm. And I think it's funny that. Bludgeon Brothers were going, they were going. Then WWE signed War Machine. The two guys got hurt. They took them off TV. Yeah. And now when they're brought back, that gimmick's gone. I was like, oh, man, they put so much work into that. I can't believe they just gave up on it like that. It was kind of hokey. I, I never. I don't think it ever really caught on like right. it should have. Uh, and I also think that Rowan looks ten times more intimidating in the flannel and T-shirt where you can see his tattoos and all that kind of stuff than he ever looked in that dorky track yeah. like jumpsuit thing, like he was a like he was a um, um, mechanic or yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. or when he was wearing like leather and straps yeah. and the Bludgeon Brothers. He actually he kicked the shit out of you now. Yeah. And I was like, man, I, that guy looks like he would beat someone up. Mm-hmm. And he's smart, cool, into it. Yeah. So I like I like that it kind of built Rowan up a little bit, even though it was quick. And the belt. I mean, oh, that belt. first of all, Daniel Bryan's promo itself was so good. <sighs> it was fire, man. I mean, I As know, the kids say, it was fire. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was similar to uh, the promo he cut a few weeks, a few months ago now, yeah. I guess, when he first mentioned that he wanted to bring a new belt, um, uh, a more sustainable belt, when he had done it like in a WWE.com kind of interview. Right. And that's kind of when it first started to pick up steam. Um and yeah, I I know I had heard of the time, I had heard of the past few months they really were working behind the scenes on this, and I was I was hoping that they were actually going to pull the trigger on it. So yeah. I'm glad they did. Um, I think there was a couple different versions of it that they that they had presented to them, and this is the one they picked. And um, I think they picked the right one. The hemp belt looks dope. Yeah. Um, uh, it's not even just the stoner in me, but like. Just like aesthetic wise, yeah. it looks like a cool pair of shoes that someone would wear. You know, it's got like cool design on it. It looks comfortable. Yeah. Um, I really liked the hemp belt. Mm-hmm. Do you think that the hemp belt? <coughs> I know we've only had it a day. <laughs> I know we've only had it not even a full day. Right. Do you think the hemp belt is the best custom belt that we've seen in WWE? There's the spinner belt. There's the glow belt. I'll be honest with you, the spinner belt doesn't hold up like it used to. Spinner belt was stupid then. Yeah, so fair. It was. I thought But I enjoyed cool. wearing it. I think the spinner belt was cool for like six months. Okay. And it was around for like yeah. years. I want to give a shout out to my friend Andre Gordon. He would let when we go when we would go to mat to matches here in the in LA, we would wear our championship belts. I know people make fun of that shit and whatever, but we loved it because we loved fucking with people while we were there. And I, w- I purposely wore the spinner belt to get people's anger. So I would spin it in front of them as they were saying stuff. I would just spin it in front of them constantly because people would come up and go, oh, when, when's your match? When's your match? And you're just like, <laughs> really? You know it's all fake, right? Do people come and say that while you're wearing oh, one yeah. of those? Oh, yeah. Some, some wrestling fans. I'll be, on- yeah, I'll be honest. Yeah. I'm kind of glad they yeah, did that. That's I, cool. Because I wouldn't ever do that, but I always am like, why is that person bringing the belt to the show? Yeah, well, you know. I saw Jordan Grace, that wrestler. She Yeah, she did. I saw that too. She said that they should be forced to defend the belt when they do. <laughs> and then she when they bring it to the show, and then someone brought the WCW big gold belt to an indie show. Uh, right. And then she made that belt be defended in her match. And so then when she won, she got presented with it, was standing in the That's ring with brilliant. it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um But yeah, what do you think it stands on the list? We got smoking skull belt, Brahma belt. Jeff Hardy's dumb purple oh, belt in yeah, TNA. Yeah, yeah. Do you think it's the best custom? I personally think like I would say it's the most beautiful belt. It's the per- of the best all of looking them. belt yeah, out of all of them, belt, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't tell my girlfriend it's the most beautiful belt. <laughs> <laughs> I want this to be a running thing. Um, um, yeah, but the Brahma belt was my favorite because the rock and everything and the the, come, the smoke coming out, all of it. But that was he, awesome. He never actually had that on TV, though. No, no. But like when I saw it, I was like, huh, 
like to me, it was like I was like mesmerized. It was such a brilliant decision to make it look like that. But the smoke, the uh, the Austin Belt was incredible as Smoking well. Smoking Belt was badass. Yeah, it was right. But that was like, wow, that's a cool one, man. I, I feel like if we're going like cool versus aesthetically pleasing, like if I was gonna buy mm-hmm. a, a, a replica belt, right? Yeah. I feel like, and this is maybe just me, and, and I'm one of the only few. I, I know wrestling fans love rec- replica belts. Yes. I don't know if I'd ever buy one. Really? They're expensive. They're they really are. expensive. They're like three hundred dollars. Yeah, they're really expensive. If I bought a smoke and skull belt, I don't know. I feel like if I put it on my, I guess, I guess if I was gonna buy, because like Jamie Ivey has replica belts and they do mm. look cool up in his apartment, like he has them on the wall. So I guess it's not the worst. Yeah. I, if I was gonna buy one, though, it's definitely on the list. It's, it's it, it would be between the smoking skull belt and, mm-hmm. and and the Daniel Bryan hemp belt. Do they sell them all on on the shop zone? They sell most of them, I think. I don't know if they sell the smoking skull belt because uh, I think it might have. It's the whole belt. Oh, like, the smoking skull is here. Is it? It is. The whole belt scene is a whole weird world, man. Oh, sure, I'm sure. Replica belts, yeah. Like the who's allowed to make what and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. It's a crazy world. Like those belt collectors are serious, serious people. The cruiserweight one, the purple one, the spinner belt is still available. It's on discount right now, three hundred thirty-five dollars. We can at least say the hemp belt is better than the spinner belt. Wait a minute, I spoke too early. Is there a custom belt? The greatest about? custom belt ever was created with black spray paint. It was that easy. It was that simple. Oh, that doesn't count. The That's NWO not a custom, belt. custom belt, which they sell. They sell it with they the sell spray with the paint? NWO. What's the difference in price between the two? Between which one? The big gold oh, oh, and the big, big gold, gold with spray paint. Well, the big gold is two fifty five ninety nine. The gold is uh, the spray paint is two ninety nine ninety nine. So it's Wait, more expensive. They charge you extra <laughs> for the spray, for the spray paint? when you can just spray paint it yourself. Not as good as they spray. Let paint me see it. what their spray paint looks like. <laughs> I'm interested. Just like, just like Hogan spray. Paint. You could easily do that on your own. You don't even pay someone fifty dollars to spray paint that. That's wild. They well, that's extra. That's, that's, that's cool. why I have multiple revenue streams, Ryan, so I can pay for those extra. I don't know bucks. if that should count as as how, a custom belt. How about the million dollar belt? Do you that's like that? a custom. That's belt. That's an awesome belt. That it was. That's not pretty aesthetically, but that's a pretty awesome belt. Is what it signified. I also I, I'm of the belief that I don't. When you didn't actually win a belt. I'm not as big a fan. <laughs> yeah, so you feel you the same way. Introduce a belt, you know? Yeah, isn't that interesting? When you just when you introduce a belt well, that was wasn't champi- a belt. Was he a champion at the time? No, 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 no. no. Okay. But no, no, yeah, he was, remember? Because uh, Andre you gave know more him, than me. Andre gave him the title after he cheated to beat uh, so Hogan. Is that what the million get, dollar title was? Right, that became the million dollar belt. Yeah. He changed it into the million dollar belt. But that okay, all right. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. But oh. it doesn't count because he didn't win the belt. Andre won the belt for him and presented him the belt so that he would be the, in essence, champion. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess it still counts then. It counts. Yeah. Million dollar belt counts. I'll, right. I'll, I'll allow it. You, will you allow it? <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll say coolest looking. Yeah. Ah, million dollar belt really did look cool. Yeah. They don't have the, they don't have the Brahma belt. Because it was never on TV. Right. Yeah. I think it's one of those things where, like, be, it's in, in that whole point. legality thing where he probably had it made by another company, so yeah. they own the rights to that, and they've never Under made a Armor, deal to just... sell, yeah, to sell the replica or whatever. All right, I gotta right. get out of here yeah, soon for an interview. So, all right, uh, uh, all right there you go. Uh, anything? Any last that we're just belt talk. Yeah, no, we're having just we're just marking for belts. <laughs> uh, Go check out the website, ProWrestlingSheet.com, where you can find all the stories, at Wrestling Sheet on social media, YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet, where you can find all the videos. Uh, Podcast One, Wrestling Sheet Radio, that's what you search. It's also on iTunes, Spotify, all the other major platforms and well as well. Um, so go make sure you guys check them all out. There you go. You can always follow me at the Roca Says on Twitter and on Instagram, and apparently there's a reason that Rock never used the actual belt. Joe Marshall made it for the WWE. It featured a 3D Brumble head. What happened was the belt was actually lost in the mail. He sent the belt via FedEx a story and it was magically lost so the WWE decided to go to a different direction. But it was also if I recall because I've heard Bruce Pritchard talk about it if I remember right where he said that like The Rock just kind of like did it on his own and, nope. they, and then they were like mm. oh he Rock says it never got lost in the mail I used it for a hot minute but ultimately we felt it wasn't an original idea since Austin had done that it That was what it was yeah they kind of he brought it in and they were like Bruh. no that's kind of The Rock that's kind of Stone Cold's thing. Fair enough. It's a beautiful belt, though. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week with an episode of Collider Body Slam uh, Raw Recap. Enjoy your week and weekend. We'll talk to you soon.